this week at Starbase. As the flurry of construction continues at the launch site, Ship 32 meets its demise, Booster 15 performs its first static fire, construction continues on Booster 17, and Ship 34 performs a long duration static fire at the Massey Outpost. Now let's dig into this week's update. Starting off the week in the early hours of Friday morning, a Starlink dispenser, presumably for Ship 36, emerged from Star Factory on its installation jig, was brought to Mega Bay 2 and lifted into the building. Later that morning, several racks of new high-pressure gas tanks were delivered to the launch site for the continued build-out of the new pad Stage 0. A concrete pump truck set up and began working on the far end of the tank farm near the D3 gate. After a little over an hour, the pour was finished and the trucks packed up. Meanwhile, back at the build site, the obsolete Ship 32 was moved out of the rocket garden and brought to the high bay for scrapping. About an hour later, the ship was hooked up to the building's bridge crane. Over at the Massey outpost, the site's crane could be seen moving multiple large objects, possibly pieces of new testing rigs to use with the Test Tank 16. At the new launch tower, crews were seen beginning the process of reeving the chopsticks. This process involves threading a lighter line through all the sheaves on the tower and the chopsticks. That line is then used to pull the heavy steel cable along the same pathway from the deadline anchor to the winch. The launch complex continued to see a steady stream of delivery trucks arriving to offload. These included more concrete vaults, steel platforms and racks for the tank farm, and an interesting-looking pre-built structural steel assembly and counterweights for a link belt crane. That afternoon, a booster transport stand was brought into Mega Bay 1 in preparation for Booster 15's upcoming relocation to the launch site. Behind the main gate guard shack at the launch site, an excavator could be seen breaking up the concrete pad and loading the debris into trucks for removal from the site. A large diameter section of piping was brought into the site, being maneuvered around the excavation work to get inside. A sump for one of the new cryogenic pumps at the expanded tank farm was loaded onto a truck and removed from the launch site, possibly indicating some kind of issue or defect. A long prefabricated section of cryogenic piping was also carefully backed into the site in front of the tank farm and offloaded to await installation. By late afternoon, the final run of the lead line between the crown block on the tower and the traveling block on the chopsticks was being pulled up to the top of the tower as crews neared the end of the process of threading the pull line. A hydraulic actuator was spotted leaving the build site and arriving at the pad a short time later. The actuator will be installed on one of the chopstick arms on the new tower and will be used to swing that arm side to side. Meanwhile, back at the Massey outpost, the crane was back at work, this time lifting an apparatus to the top of the test tank a few times before lowering it back to the ground. And back up the road, Booster 15 emerged from Mega Bay 1. The Flight 8 Super Heavy then made its way through the ring yard and onto Highway 4 for its first trip to the launch complex. About an hour later, the rocket rolled into the D2 gate and headed straight for the chopsticks on Tower 1. Before dawn, the arms were raised to the lifting points on Booster 15. The rocket was then lifted off its stand and transferred to the launch mount in preparation for its static fire campaign. Later that morning, a third concrete pump truck arrived and got to work at the launch complex, joining the two others that began work in the early morning hours. Within the next few hours, however, all three of those trucks began packing up. One of them repositioned and briefly redeployed its boom, but by 12.30 that afternoon, all three had wrapped up and departed. Meanwhile, a small tank and a small vaporizer were taken out of the launch site and moved across the road to Starhopper's parking lot for storage. Back at the launch complex, the launch mount work platform was moved away from Pad A in anticipation of the upcoming static fire. And over by the tank farm, an excavator picked up one of the unused trench boxes and carried it towards Pad B, likely to be lowered into a fresh trench to allow crews access to work. As the afternoon wore on, Booster 15's transport stand followed the work platform and was moved away from the pad ahead of testing. Early Sunday, the ship static fire stand was brought over to the build site in preparation for Ship 34's upcoming static fire campaign. As the Sunday rose over Starbase, testing preparations continued as the chopsticks on Tower 1 were raised into launch position. 
Several hours later, with the road closed and the pad cleared, SpaceX loaded propellant into Booster 15. Then shortly before 10 that morning, the Flight 8 Super Heavy lit its 33 Raptor engines for the first time, performing a successful static fire. That afternoon, following the morning's testing campaign, Mechazilla's arms were closed and the ship quick disconnect arm swung out from the launch tower. The chopsticks were then lowered back down to the hard stop. Up the road at the build site, the ship static fire stand was moved into Mega Bay 2, ready to receive Ship 34. As dusk fell, the drawwork's thick steel cable could be seen moving down towards the Tower 2 chopsticks, then heading back up after passing through the traveling block as crews used the pull rope to reeve the lifting cable. That night, the chopsticks over at Pad A were raised up off the stop and moved into position around Booster 15 in preparation for the rocket's removal from the mount. And just after midnight, workers gathered around Ship 34 on the static fire stand for a quick photo op. Once the picture was done, the rocket was rolled out of the building and onto Highway 4 for its trip to the Massey Outpost for a static fire. Down the road at the launch complex, Booster 15 was lifted off the launch mount. The Super Heavy was then raised up the tower and held in the catch position for a while before eventually being lowered and placed onto its awaiting transport stand. Two truckloads of stands for cryogenic pumps were delivered to the tank farm area and offloaded. Around that same time, a truck showed up with a pair of pump sumps that will likely be installed in those stands. And shortly before noon, Booster 15 was on the move again as it was rolled the rest of the way across the pad to the D2 gate. The Flight 8 first stage was then driven onto Highway 4, headed back towards the build site. A little over an hour later, the rocket was moved through the ring yard and parked in front of Mega Bay 1. That afternoon, the skid with the small tank and vaporizer was carried back into the launch site after being stored near Hoppy for the static fire. The large prefabricated section of cryogenic pipe that was delivered a few days earlier was lifted off the ground and loaded back onto a trailer, having never been installed. Back up the road at the build site, after scrapping crews finished cutting off the aft section of Ship 32, it was rolled out of the high bay and left next to the door. With preparations inside the building completed now, Booster 15 was moved into Mega Bay 1 for final fit-outs and preparations before Launch 8. Throughout the afternoon, several mystery deliveries arrived outside the build site. A load of blue wrapped boxes, a possible downcomer, and a large white box were all brought in and offloaded. That night, once Booster 15 had been transferred to one of the work stands in Mega Bay 1, its transport stand was brought out of the building and taken to the Sanchez site for storage. In the early hours of Tuesday morning, the hydraulic actuator for the second arm on the new tower was moved down to the launch complex. And a short time later, Booster 17's aft section was moved from Star Factory to Mega Bay 1 as SpaceX nears completion of the stacking of the latest Super Heavy's liquid oxygen tank. After dawn, the scrapping of Ship 32 continued in High Bay as a section of this ship's liquid oxygen tank was removed and brought outside the building. At the Massey Outpost, Ship 34 underwent some flap actuation testing, starting with its aft flaps, then moving on to the forward flaps. Another delivery of pump stands arrived and were offloaded at the tank farm, followed by another few loads of steel for the build-out of Pad B. Around noontime, Ship 32 continued to shrink as its common dome section was brought out of High Bay. Later, a crane was spotted lifting the first pieces of steel in the flame trench for installation. The scrapping of Ship 32 continued with another section of the obsolete ship being brought out of High Bay. That evening, the Massey outpost was cleared out for testing on Ship 34. At 8.15 p.m. local time, SpaceX performed their most ambitious ship static fire yet as the Flight 8 Starship fired its six Raptor engines for almost a full minute. This long duration was to test out new hardware and cycle the engines through different simulated flight conditions. Early on Wednesday, a new vertical tank was brought down Highway 4 to the launch complex. Once it arrived, the tank was maneuvered into the tank farm area to await installation. Later that morning, SpaceX's large crawler crane began rolling across the pad towards that new tank. Meanwhile, up the road at the build site, a white mystery structure was moved into the ring yard area from the Sanchez site. SpaceX has been using Sanchez to assemble various components for Star Factory. 
This new structure was taken into the rocket production building just a short time later. That morning, SpaceX's large crane with an assist from another smaller crane lifted the new tank, rotated it upright, and moved it into position. At the Massey outpost, Ship 34's flaps were closed following the rocket's successful static fire that night. Crews then went up to secure the flaps for transport. Back at the launch complex, the recently delivered second hydraulic actuator was lifted and installed on the backside of the new tower's starboard arm. Late that afternoon, Ship 36's nose cone and payload section were moved from Star Factory to Mega Bay 2. This is the first time these sections have been stacked inside of Star Factory. Additionally, Ship 36 is the first ship to be pre-fitted with catching hardware. Around midnight, Ship 34 started rolling through the Massey outpost and onto Highway 4 as it began its return journey to the build site. Meanwhile, a second new vertical tank was moved up the highway and delivered to the launch complex to be added to the expanded tank farm. And later that morning, work on the tank farm continued with the installation of some of the new pump stands that were delivered earlier in the week. Along with the stand, some associated hardware and piping was also lifted for installation. That afternoon, crews were seen removing the Marscape mural from the side of the parking garage at the build site. Evidently, it seems that the mural took on some wind damage recently, and SpaceX has elected to take it down for now. Back at the launch site, the ship quick disconnect arm on Tower 1 was swung away from the tower and the chopsticks raised and opened into the launch position. Once the chopsticks were past it, the quick disconnect arm was rotated back towards the tower. Next, the ship quick disconnect interface was extended, simulating a connection to a stacked starship. Over the next couple of hours, SpaceX performed various tests on the tower, including the raising of the landing rails, simulated catch movements with the arms, and a full speed retraction of the ship quick disconnect. Switching over to Florida on Saturday afternoon, Falcon 9 Booster 1078 lifted off for the 17th time as it launched the Starlink Group 12-9 mission from Space Launch Complex 40. That evening, Bob was spotted towing just read the instructions out to sea in support of the Starlink Group 12-8 mission. Well before dawn on Monday, Doug returned to Port Canaveral with both of the recovered fairing halves from Saturday's Starlink mission. Later that morning, a short fall of Gravitas also returned to port, carrying the Falcon 9 first stage from the same launch. That afternoon, Booster 1078 was lifted off the deck of the drone ship and set on the dock to await its turn on the processing stand. On Tuesday morning, Booster 1069 completed its dockside stay and was laid onto an awaiting transporter for its return to Roberts Road. And that afternoon, Booster 1077 took to the Florida skies for Space Launch Complex 40's second Starlink mission in just over 72 hours. Early on Wednesday, Harvey Stone towed Blue Origin's landing barge Jacqueline out to sea, possibly for some sea trials based on data from New Glenn's first launch. That afternoon, a short fall of Gravitas was towed back out to sea in support of another Starlink mission. The next morning, Doug also departed Port Canaveral for fare and recovery operations for that same launch. And less than an hour later, Bob returned to port with the fairing halves from Tuesday's Starlink launch. Meanwhile, crews had completed dockside processing for Booster 1078 and it was moved to a transporter for its trip to SpaceX's refurbishment facilities. As the busy day continued, just read the instructions was towed back into port with Booster 1077 from the Starlink Group 12-8 mission. And just a few hours later, the rocket was lifted off the drone ship and transferred to the dockside stand for leg stowing operations. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching, Lab Padre out.